Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to talk about printing high resolution, almost resin based resolution on an FDM printer. So, one of the things I saw this one video on, um, I think it's a 3D tabletop, something like that. I have a link down below. Uh, anyways, he was making these. Um, miniatures for Dungeon and Dragon games and uh, I thought it was rather interesting the quality he was getting and I was wondering if this could be applied to something like printing gears. So one of the things I've got this gear for these little stepper motors that I experiment a lot with and actually this is probably one of my more popular downloads on Thingiverse and uh, but the one thing I, I noticed that they, they they don't come out the best. So what I wanted to do is try this methodology, maybe sort of work on improving it a little bit or mastering it a little bit better, so put, and see if I could do that to print out better gears. And um, I think I've roughly succeeded. Now, uh, tell you what. Uh, let's go jump in because what we're going to do is we're going to use Cura for this because I think that's part of the secret and that's part of what I gleaned from his video. And so let's jump into Cura for a minute. Let's see how all that works and then we'll come back to the bench. Okay, here we are in Cura. So I've got my layer height set to 0.1, so I want to find print. I'm also going to be using 0.1 over here too for my initial layer height. And then what I want to do is I want to jump down here to point out my top layer. So I'm going to be using top layers of 8 as well as bottom layers of 8. So this seems to be a standard Cura setting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use these for my control print. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to use 20% infill. And then I am going to, if I scroll down a little bit further, use 60 millimeters per second again which is about the standard um, for print speed now what I want to do is uh, just go down here make sure adaptive layering is turned off and then one of the things you'll notice is I'm going to have at this setting uh, 210 layers so I'm in layer view and uh, I'm gonna have 210 layers now this is gonna be important for when we go to make the changes but right now I'm gonna go save this off and then I'll come back and let's talk about the changes we're gonna make to improve the profile okay so we're back and I've already made two changes here up here to uh, layer height and initial layer height to 0 0.05 so I've taken it half so I should have double the number of layers which as you see here I now have 420 layers now one of the things when we jump down here to top layers and bottom layers you'll notice that this number doubles so this is this is obviously working as a function of um, uh, of, of the initial layer height so but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top layer and I'm going to change this to 420 and then what I'm going to also do is go down here to bottom layer and make it zero so what's going to happen now is every layer of this will be treated as a top layer now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change the infill percentage to 100 and so that's now taken and then I'm going to scroll down a little bit more um, and where I have uh, print speed I am going to change this to 20 from 60 and hopefully I get that to change there we go so change it from 20 to 60 so uh, obviously you see my outer wall speed of change my uh, so down to 10 and so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give this a shot now one of the things you see this is now jumped up to two hours and 40 minutes so almost three hours to print this part so this is gonna be rather interesting so let's go ahead and let's print these out and then we'll go back at the bench and talk about them some more so time-lapse and then we'll see you guys at the bench cheers
Okay, welcome back. So I'll run some videos of this this printing out in the corner, uh, but really, you know, both came out pretty good. You know, just at first glance, it would be a little bit difficult uh, to tell which one was which, and it's probably on the video a little bit difficult. And I'll hold these together to zoom in and see if you can pick out which one it is. And if you pick this one as the low quality, you'd be right. So one of the things I want to do to kind of demonstrate this is uh, let's go ahead, let's turn on the scale and let's uh, weigh this. So we, we'll put this one on. So this weighs about two grams. And then we'll go ahead, let's zero back out. We'll put this one on here. And that weighs about two grams too, but uh, I'm kind of curious. Well, I think it's actually reading a little bit closer to three because it's only reading in full grams. Because this one I can feel is definitely heavier than this one. Because as you recall from the Cura video, when we were in Cura, I did this one with 20% infill. Where this one is 100% and it's all top layers, which is really solid. Now, I'll do some overlays also of this uh, under the microscope, and you can clearly see. Now, both are pretty good, I, I must admit, uh, but one of the things that I can say, and I don't know if I can get this in here, is the, the gears are, I'm going to say, probably pretty much the same, or the cog pieces in the center, but where it really is nicer uh, is the uh, edges on this one are fairly rough. Uh, they're not as refined as they are on this one. This, uh, on the uh, one where we did the all top layers, 100% infill, 0.5 layer height is pretty much a solid piece um, and really came out nice. So I really think this works. Now, uh, again, sort of to recap, one of the things that I did with this is number one instead of as is in the miniatures video instead of just putting 999 which maybe you could i actually specified the entire width so in this case uh, at point zero five was i think 420 layers so i specified 420 layers as being top layers now my understanding from what i've read is that controls the expansion and lays it down uh, better than you know intermediate layers if you will because again uh, you know it assumes that this this is going to be the top so it creates a top for each one and that's one of the things in the comments which I read uh, in the miniatures uh, video is that uh, you know it's this creating a top layer for each one which really does the goodness here and I gotta tell you guys I'm really impressed now did take a long time the 20% infill took 23 minutes the um, high quality took about two and a half hours so you get what you pay for now I, I you know how much was the top layering versus the speed versus the infill um, I, you know, I think the speed is a little bit subjective. I'm going to probably do some more experiments where I keep the layer height, but I turn up the speed. Uh, because I think one of the things, especially in the quality of this taper, uh, is, is probably um, a bit due to the layering. And I think if I went faster, uh, I think it would be uh, almost as good. Now, obviously going slower, I think, gives you better... Um, probably layer adhesion and, and formation because you're providing more time for it to go together because this is going around at 20 uh, millimeters a second versus 60 obviously it's more time for it to come together and bond and I think that's what's happening in this case so uh, you know if you know better uh, let me know in the comments below but I gotta say this really worked out nice and I think uh, the other piece with this and the reason I wanted to try this is I think this piece is far more robust bust because the one problem I have had in the past with these is after a bit of use they want to start delaminating uh, when I've used infill and even when I've gone up in infill they've started to want to delaminate over time especially with uh, PLA so I, I'm kind of excited I think because this piece I think will be more robust um, I'm also interested to try this with other materials like uh, you know pet G uh, in maybe TP you and things like that and see how all that comes out so anyways hopefully you found it interesting if you did give it a big thumbs up let me know what maybe settings you're using to get resin style quality out of an fdm printer uh, or is there something else i should take a look at with regards to this now i'm going to do some more experimenting i'll probably
probably come out with a couple more future videos on this um, to kind of see if I can tighten it up uh, and also bring down the time because two and a half hours was a long time to wait for this guy. And if you got to print several of them, <laughs> you could be there for a long time if you know what I mean. So anyways, don't forget Swag Shop up in the corner. Give it a big thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video where we make something else. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.